Hi, I'm Ellie from crystallinks.com. Today is Wednesday, August 30th, 2017. There are video blogs I have done in the past that are more happy and bubbly. This one today comes at the time of a natural disaster called Hurricane Harvey. It started last week, Friday to be exact, in the Gulf of Mexico and into Texas, into Houston. Houston is flooded. Uh, that's all you really see on the news. It makes you not want to go and, and, and do anything but just pray for the people who have lost everything. Picture your life that everything that you cherish is gone. Hopefully not loved ones, but just inanimate objects, which as we know can be replaced. Um, this storm was predicted. Some people prepared and left. Most seem to have stayed, but there are so many things, as with everything else, there's the good and the bad. In the little bit of good, people have come together in unity to help save the lives of the victims, to help find them homes and shelters for themselves, their families, their pets. Um, it kind of reminded me of Katrina, which we know was 20 years ago yesterday, uh, 12 years ago, I'm sorry, 12 years ago yesterday, and when Katrina happened, I happened to be in Europe, and it delayed my trip home. Then I moved forward with something that was a little closer to home, and that was Hurricane Sandy, and since I live right on the Atlantic, Hurricane Sandy was quite the disaster for my area, but absolutely nothing nothing compares to what is currently going on in Houston. Uh, there's dangers, there's chemical plants that could blow, there are uh, rising rivers flooding everywhere. It's, it's something unprecedented. I, it could be one of the worst disasters this country has ever faced. I looked at things like could a hurricane of this magnitude cause, well, besides we know it might cause mudslides, could it cause earthquakes? Could it cause other natural disasters to occur? Um, there's so many different windows to embrace with this. Politically, yesterday, uh, President Trump went to, not Houston, he went to two other places, Austin and I think Corpus Christi, with his wife, but his, we all think he did it for the optics, you know, and the, oh, look at the great big crowd, but you know what, that's the negativity of all of this. When it comes to Trump, just like this natural disaster has brought the country together in many ways, his behavior has also brought the country together in many ways. So I always look at everything as there's the good and the bad. Um, now, there are people who have written to me because I have a metaphysical website and they have said that all of this was part of a conspiracy theory. They, they said it, it was started by ARP or perhaps aliens or perhaps anything else that, you know, that they talk about. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because we are at the end of this cycle of time, or the end of the hologram as I call it, and events like this are non-stoppable. I know what goes on at the climate change meetings and how people feel that climate change is going to prevent all of this from happening. No, it's really not going to. It's a cycle. It's going to happen, just like the hot weather, cold weather, unpredictable weather. It's all part of something that I just label as end times, natural disasters, the earthquakes, the tornadoes, the crazy insane weather. It's all here, it's all here to stay. And honestly, I know people will dump things on you like, well, humans did it. In my opinion, humans may have contributed a little bit to it, but this is the natural course of events of what was supposed to happen at this time. You really are living through end time events and you see it everywhere in every walk of life. Um, there's one other thing that came to mind, forget the conspiracy theorists, it doesn't matter who did it. it. Even if conspiracy theorists did it, 
they were programmed to do it. So let's leave them in the back burner. And then I looked at the astrology of it all. We are currently in Mercury retrograde, ending next week on September 5th. Mercury retrograde, I call repetitions and delays. That means that things that occur at this time will occur again. And if it does have to do with climate and any earth changes, it will be stronger and more powerful. After Sandy happened in my area about five years ago, it'll be five years, people who lived on the coastline, people who lost their homes, who lost everything, they were the first ones to stand up and say, this is far from over. This is going to happen again. Anybody who lives coastal can be affected by this, not to mention the fact I can't leave this out. On the side, where we just do mention it here and there, North Korea is continually sending rockets, and they are, whether they want to attack Guam that they're threatening, or whoever, or they're just doing practices, or none of this makes sense to me, by the way. It just doesn't make any sense. But we'll leave that for the political reporters. But the bottom line is they are sending these rockets into the Pacific Plate over and over and over again. The Pacific Plate is broken. It's cracked. Da -da 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 -da. It is not going to be fixed. It cannot be fixed. Things are going to get worse there. And just like we say here in the United States and other places, fracking is rupturing the North American plate and others, so too is North Korea. They're fracturing the Pacific plate, which is already in very bad shape. So what happens when a plate fractures? As we know, there's earthquakes. They can be underwater earthquakes. There's underwater volcanoes. There's underwater everything. But when these things start to go into the nines, okay, an earthquake magnitude nine at a certain depth, this causes tsunamis. And if you think that this water coming in now is something destructive beyond words, what's going to happen when that Pacific plate breaks? And it's not like people are saying, oh, Ellie, this won't happen for a long time. Don't worry about it. You know, and I think, oh, will I be dead and buried by then? No, it's going to happen soon. If you live on the Pacific Coast, and I read a lot of people on the Pacific Coast, they are very fearful of North Korea. They are very fearful of the ongoing earth changes and the earthquakes. They know that the uh, tectonic plates that are broken and the earthquake um, fault lines go all the way down and all the way up in Mexico, South America, all through and through and through. So everything, as we know, is connected or interconnected. Now, if a plate breaks really big time, that's the Pacific plate, it will break the other plates. They're, they're connected. Our plate already is fractured, which people who follow earthquakes know. Uh, when that happens, we will have tsunami activity on the coast, but Tsunami activity does not just go a little bit like a hurricane. Tsunami activity goes miles inland. So I, I'd love to present a picture of hope that these things won't happen, but you got to be realistic. I mean, we live in a crazy world. We have cr insane politicians running things. We have People who look at everything as a conspiracy, maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong. It's not for me to say. We have people who walk around, like when I saw some woman coming out of the, uh, it was the end of last week, Friday, she was someone who was rescued, a, a black woman with a little baby. She was rescued from, from the um, hurricane. And she said, it just feels like it's the end of the world, that everything that could go wrong is going wrong. These sentiments are felt everywhere. Everywhere I look, people are like, oh, they don't have to follow prophecies. They're not going to say Nostradamus called it or this one called it or, or some psychic on, on TV or some psychic in the news or whoever and whatever you watch. 
what is going on here is a pattern of end time events. What can you do about it? I always say be prepared. I tend to keep my car filled with gas. I tend to keep some money home. Not that a tsunami is, is going to be any different. I tend to have backups for things. Um, I am a backed up type of person. I think I became that person when I was raising three little children and events would happen, blizzards, things. I From that day forth, I said, okay, I have to be sure that there are always backups for everything. And I've had people who have laughed at me. You don't need that much canned goods and you don't need this and you don't need that. But you really do. Um, it's a crazy world. Here in New York, we never know what's going to happen here. You're looking at Europe, I mean Europe and all the tumultuous activities, all of the terrorist attacks, all and everything everywhere says be on your guard. Now, people in Hurricane Harvey and other hurricanes have said they lost everything, okay? This speaks to me because, maybe because of my age, but I keep everything very downsized. I guess I should keep a go bag. One never knows, right? But I don't have one. But I, you keep things downsized. You don't say, oh my God, I love all of these papers I've collected. I love all of this tangible stuff that I've been hoarding away, or maybe not just hoarding, saving through the years. What's going to happen is going to happen, and you're just going to have to go with the flow, pardon the pun, and see what falls out, because this is accelerating, okay? It's all going to accelerate very, very quickly. Everything is going to accelerate. So as I blog to my millions of readers, go and prepare, and not to be nervous about it. I'm not fearful. I'm really not. I mean, when people talk about this could happen with Korea, this could happen here, this could happen there. Again, it could go to my age, but I also feel que sera, sera, you know, whatever's going to be is going to be. I see a series of end time events that happen almost like a domino effect, starting with natural disasters and climate, boom, 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 affecting economies, politics, social behavior, everything. Mostly it unites people, which is great. Um, but, you know, always remember, everything has a positive and a negative and a good side and a bad side. And it's for you to determine, you know, what you would do if there was an earthquake. What would you would do if there was a flood? Well, you know, we'll be, it's August now, but a couple of months along comes the snow. Always be prepared mentally and physically. Um, I don't know what else to say about the poor people in Houston and surrounding areas who are left homeless other than I, I know that people are reaching out, raising millions of dollars. The government, you know, I read today something interesting about insurance that, I don't know if this is true, but it came from NBC, that 80% of the people who were flooded out did not have flood insurance. They may have had other insurance, fire and whatever, but they didn't have flood insurance. The government, there's a whole thing going on with the government about how much is going to be paid out, but people are gonna rally. Texas Texans are strong people, just like the New Yorkers, but no, this will not take days, weeks, months, or years even, it could take decades. I mean, some of the damage here in New York from Sandy is still not corrected. People are still putting back the pieces of their lives. So you have to be a strong person in today's world, whether you're reading about the craziness or living it and experiencing it. You have to just say, in the moments of most stress, just do that, that one deep breath thing where you just go, center your brain, center your thinking, and then let whatever's programmed to happen, happen. Uh, I always do it as one deep breath. I'm sure you've seen it all over. People always say, okay, relax, take a deep breath, focus. I do it one deep breath, I think is enough, but whatever it is, 
okay? Particularly if you're in areas of flooding and earthquakes and all kinds of disasters, be braced, be prepared. You know, I know you all have your little personal dramas, whether it has to do with the relationships you're in or your personal health or your finances or, or anything else, your children, family issues. I know, everybody is dealing with something, right? Even the monks, they used to say, well, if you're a monk, you go live in a monastery in Tibet. They deal with their stuff too. Everybody deals with stuff. That's what we're here to experience. So whatever your stuff is, Think about what your priorities would be in case of, even in case of a blackout. What are you going to do if there was the power grid went down and you did not have your cell phone or your tech stuff? So be prepared for all things and until the next blog, stay safe, send prayers to the people in Texas. They're going to need them for a long time coming um, and we shall see what comes up next. Thank you for watching.